everybody how's it going um today i'm going to be um doing my march mystery madness tbr um i think the most maddening thing about this is how much time i spent trying to find the perfect books um <clears throat> I wanted to read authors that I've been really enjoying. Um, and I also wanted to make sure that the books themselves were, in fact, mysteries and um, not just crime stories. Um, that is a problem I fall into quite a bit. Um, so, this list, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, will probably change. But, um, we don't know that yet. So, um, <clears throat> let's get cracking here. Um, so the first prompt is single. Okay, and I have two books here. Um, one reason is, and you'll see this with a few of my other um, prompts, I pick two books in case one of them doesn't fit properly. Um, and, or if... Um, the book's awful, and I don't like it. I don't want to force myself to read something that I'm not digging just because it's a prompt. So I try to um, have multiples for different prompts. Um, some of the multiples um, I don't have um, written down because I haven't decided on those either. So um, I might be... Uh, coming back a little bit for that. Okay, um, I know that was like a ridiculous... Y you know what I'm saying. Okay, so the first one, single. I have Wild by Gil Brewer. And I also have Nightfall by David Goodis. Um, both of these books... Um, probably lean more towards crime but as long as there is a mystery going on as long as there's something that the um, point of view character is trying to figure out um, that will work the other problem I have is that I don't like to know anything about a book before I go into it. I don't like to read the, a synopsis because a lot of times I've read like a d book description or whatever. And here's an example. And I know you guys have been through this too. Like, let's say you didn't know anything about the Titanic and, um, you were going to read a book about the Titanic so you could learn about it, but you know nothing about it. And the synopsis is like, oh, the Titanic is about the biggest ship in the world that was indestructible, but it hit an iceberg and broke in half and most of the people died and um, froze to death and um, a few people lived. And you're like, oh. Well, I guess I don't have to read the Titanic now. Um, so that's how I feel about reading descriptions. And usually when I'm like watching BookTube and someone's talking about a book, um, like I hate giving spoilers to stuff. And when I'm watching BookTube, I'll hear somebody going on about a book and then they're like, they hit a part where I'm like, oh my gosh, are they gonna, <sighs> and then like, I'll either mute it or I'll skip ahead a little bit or I'll just like stop the whole thing 
because I'm interested in that book and I'm terrified about going any further. Um, this is awful. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, and then I have um, number. Now, this is a, another Guild Brewer book, but I might not read it. <laughs> so this is um, 13 French Street. Um, this is the book that kind of made him a name among the paperback original community. Um, I don't know much about it, but um, there's also another book he wrote um, called 77 Rue something, um, which, again, is a address in Paris, um, or in France, I guess. But there's also another book called, um, 545 to Suburbia by Vin Packer. Um, I'm not sure how any of these, um, fall into mystery, but I'm not going to know until I start reading them. So that's why this is tricky for me. Um, 545 to Suburbia, um, I also have is a maybe on time. So, um, that's, a up and a down one. Um, now for person, like I have so many books that I could be reading for person. Um, so what I originally wrote was more in the hangman by Harry Winnington, but, um, I think I want to read, um, the second Mike Ballard book, um, it's like the sequel to Brute and Brass by Harry Winnington, and this is called, um, Any Woman He Wanted. So, um, he's a person, woman, are people, so that probably works. Um, and then I have Place. Um, and this one is, um, Dorothy Hughes in a Lonely Place. Um, I love this movie, a uh, Humphrey Bogart movie. I've always wanted to read the book. I've had the book for uh, probably close to 15 years and I haven't read it yet. <laughs> It's just this book that I'm like, ooh, I'm going to read that someday. Um, and then there's also um, another Harry Winnington book that has the word place in the title that I can't think of right now, and I don't have it written down. So I'll have that picture um, somewhere um, to continue that. Now, weather, for me, was quite tricky um, I don't know what exactly I was looking for, or if um, the Lonely Silver Rain by John D. MacDonald, the last um, Travis McGee book, like got stuck in my head, and I couldn't unsee that, but it was just like nothing else like, made any sense. As soon as I started thinking weather, I'm like, oh, Lonely Silver Rain, which also works for a color, which we'll talk about in a minute. <clears throat> but there is another book by John D. MacDonald that I've been wanting to read that was originally, um, I don't know if it was originally released as Hurricane or if when it was put out a second time it was called Hurricane. Um... But the other title, and the title that I actually have the book at, I'll put here. I'm This is awful, I'm sorry. Um, but that was the one that I had picked, so I wouldn't have to break my line of Travis McGee books. But I don't think this book is much of a mystery. It seems like um, almost like Clue, where a bunch of people, because of a storm, end up in, like, an abandoned mansion together, and they have to kind of ride the storm out, and so all these characters have, like, different things going on with their lives, and it doesn't seem like there's a mystery over the whole thing, but there's a mystery 
in a couple of the characters that are there and what they're up to. Um, so I've been wanting to read that book for a while and this is a perfect opportunity, but, um, I also want to read, um, Death in the Clouds or Death in the Air by, um, Agatha Christie. And I don't think this works for weather, but clouds have something to do with weather. Um, there is air outside when weather changes or stays the same. Um, this is a stretch beyond any kind of stretch I've ever done, I think, for one of these things. But um, it could work, so we will see. So, with color, um, again, I have The Lonely Silver Rain in here by John D. MacDonald. But I also have Miami Blues um, by uh, Charles Wolford. Um, and I, it, the book was recommended to me, but I don't know if I'm going to like it. Like it, um, it feels very John D. McDonald, like just with the whole Florida, um, area. But, um, I think it's a little more gritty. It seems almost more, um, from the little I know about it, it seems very much more Elmore Leonard um, than John D. MacDonald, but um, I won't know until I give it a go. So another time book, um, as I talked about before, I had the Ben Packer book. Um, there was another book, too, that I had that had a time in it. Um, but I also have One Deadly Dawn by Harry Winnington. Dawn being the time, and um, this could also work for um, number if I want to go that route with it. Um, so I don't know. I, 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 I don't know what to do. Um, I don't know. We're going to find out. Because I, I just get like the blurb off the front of the book, the artwork on the cover, and then I try to do the math myself. So it could be that I start reading these books. None of them are mysteries. And that I'm just like, well, that's not true. I know some of them are. But I, I would have to restart the whole thing anyway. So who knows? Um, space. Now this one, this one was so hard. And I don't know why. So um, I have another... Uh, David Goodis book here um, called Moon in the Gutter which I had as a placeholder like I want to read that book but um, I'm not like running to it um, if that makes sense but then I heard of this book that is a sci-fi book called Corpus Earthling and I didn't write the author's name down, but I'll have a picture of the book here so you can see it. But this book sounds so cool. This guy is um, like kind of like hearing voices. And he doesn't know if he's going crazy or what. Um, but he's like hearing stuff that sounds like almost like an alien invasion. Um, but it... From what I could tell, it doesn't really make any sense. And then all of a sudden he hears them say, the voices say, wait, we're being listened to. Who's listening to us? And he's like, oh my God, like totally panics. Um, so it's like him trying to figure out if he's crazy, if this is really happening. And I'm sure... Um, that mystery will be solved very early on in the book, and then there will be all sorts of other stuff. But that's like the premise of the book. But it sounds so like so much fun. So I'm really excited about that. Um, another book that I was toying with was um, This Crowded Earth. But um, it didn't really... I didn't start... I didn't want to start reading it to find out if it was a mystery or not and then get into it and then not be able to have it to read for March. Um, so you know how I, you know how I is, you know, um, things just happen. 
But then, yesterday, in doing my um, little uh, recommendation video, and I was talking about Carter Brown, I started showing a bunch of Carter Brown books, and one of them was called The Girl from Outer Space. And this is exactly what the prompts are supposed to be, to have the word in the title. So I freaked out. And it should be here within like a week or two. So I'm very excited. Um, so it should be really fun. So then, <clears throat> once the girl from outer space showed up, I put Moon in the Gutter into my bonus section, um, which is a book you bought based on the title. Now, Moon in the Gutter might not even be a mystery, and I might be up this creek all over again. But the book that I picked for the title being the reason why you bought the book is Ed Lacey's Strip for Violence. It sounds very dirty. Um, it probably isn't. Um, but I just thought that that was neat. And the cover of this, um, it just looks so like late 50s, early 60s, like almost like like blackboard jungle kind of I don't know I just got some cool vibes off of the title the font used in the title not the font because I know it was like painted but you know what I'm saying so anyway um those are um the many books that I picked for, um, I picked way too many books, but the thing is, I'm not going to read all these books. These are, this book either has to be good or it has to be a mystery. And if it's not one of those two things, well, it has to be a mystery, but then it also has to be good. So if any of these books fail, it's out. So, um, that is my TBR. Now, if you have um, your TBR done, please link link them. Um, I don't know if you could link videos on YouTube and comments, but even write them out. Like, um, I would love to hear what you guys are reading for these prompts. Um, and I'm going to be doing um, my own little readathons um coming up starting in April and um I have a idea for them and we'll see how far um we can go with them and um that are kind of they're not I don't even know why I'm still talking I'll probably edit all this out. But um, these are my books for March Mystery Madness. I feel like I've gone crazy trying to put this list together. Um, it's been very, very tricky. Um, and also, if you want to get some free books, um, as of right now, um, my books, Black Star Murder and Dead Dame Walking um, are free on Amazon. There will be links in the description below. There's also links down below for the Discord, um, the March Mystery Madness Discord, which has been tons of fun, and um, links to everybody's channel who's hosting um, this year. And um, So there's tons of stuff to do. It's really fun. Um, I hope everyone has a good day. And um, a good weekend. Today's Friday. I should do a weekend reads. Should I do a separate video? I'll do a separate video. Um, and we'll talk to you soon.